Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here, and we got a bit of a situation. There is no internet at the Maddie Plays household, and therefore, I'm at my buddy's Connor's house recording this video. So I said, Connor, why don't you fucking join me, man? Sounds good. All, All right. Down. So we're talking about Vampire. This game I've been closely following on the channel drops June 5th, a role-playing game. Very exciting stuff, as always. This time we're looking at the newest trailer. It's called Becoming the Monster. And as we can see in the gameplay rolling in the background, lots of evil shit going down, which is, in my opinion for starters, pretty surprising because a lot of games nowadays, especially role-playing games, they favor be the good guy, save everybody. But the first time we see role-playing in action in this game, we're seeing him murder everyone. We're seeing all these abilities. He's feeding on everyone. Does this can yeah, and, and also to be fair, I have been covering this game for a while. You're new to this game. So what's your initial take when you saw all this blood and gore on screen? The way that I took it when I first saw it was that it's a different take on what a vampire game, you know, would originally be. Because mm. what I'm thinking is that you're obviously the vampire that's going to be saving people and trying to do that without feeding on everyone that you can see. Mm -hmm. And in this game, they're giving you the evil part, like you said. Yes. But it's interesting the way that he's taking on each enemy. You see the combat? I'm getting more of a kill everything vibe. Yeah. I'm getting more of a, okay, I need to take out whatever I can because I need to give in to my feeding, to give in to my thirst for blood. Yes. And yeah. I don't see that a lot with games. No, I don't you see don't. That. You, you don't see them telling you like, hey, go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> go crazy, kill everyone, you know? Like, yeah. you see more of a evil side, which you were saying, and it makes me think, okay, I see the combat, I see the evil part, but what's gonna grab me and bring me in to mm. the story of it? Yeah, you know? well, that's a good point. What's gonna bring the consequence into effect where, you know, you see him killing everybody, he's about to feed on an innocent civilian here. What is the impact of that? Because a lot of the reading I've done on this game is you take out a civilian like that, they have their own quest line, they have their own story, their own impact on the world. I think nowadays in games that's very hard to do because games are so big and complex, they're prettier than ever, and I feel like with all of that combined, it's hard to account for all the choice and consequence that we'd get in a game from the early 2000s or the 90s where uh, things weren't as demanding, technically weren't allowed for that gameplay choice. So it's interesting to see that they're feeding into the evil part and I wonder if we're gonna get a reverse effect in this game where we're gonna see a title that feeds the evil side of the role playing, but maybe the good side isn't as fun. I thought a good example of that, while it's not a role playing game, is Prey. You know, remember how Prey, it was really rewarding to just be evil, kill everyone because you get the Typhon powers, but also if you're good, it was kind of, in my opinion, when I played it through, I didn't find it as enjoyable to stealth and save everyone. Yeah, I can agree on that, and especially from me when I, I played the good ending because I didn't kill as many people as I could have. So, yeah, it was a little boring, but to tell yeah. you the truth, it br brought a different aspect to the story. That's something we can relate to this because you're seeing everything evil, mm -hmm. but then in Prey, you know what I mean? You want to get the good ending. You want to be the good guy. You want to stop what's going on. Absolutely. You know, but then this kind of brings me into... Hmm, if I'm evil in this, yeah. maybe I can just see as much all the mayhem I can do. Yeah, all, like all I'm the people that. I can kill. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of games do that though, and that's why this is so exciting in my personal opinion. It's just the fun of a role-playing game is you come back a second time, and it's almost this whole new experience where you play the game, you're evil. We're talking about creating all this mayhem. You come back. I wonder if there's going to be a second trailer later this month before the game drops called Coming the Hero or something along those lines, yeah, where you're not giving uh, into your urges what happens with that because on the other hand they're trying to sell this game right so we're we're seeing when you're evil it's action-packed there's a lot of killing and actually we should talk about that a little bit okay. we get a really good look at the combat here probably our most extensive look from what i've seen with the gameplay and do you get a witcher feeling here because they said that this game was inspired by the witcher in a lot of ways which many role-playing games since it's dropped have been okay well someone who's coming in on it i i didn't know about that but mm. in my opinion yeah i can kind of see the witcher vibe it gives yeah. off like mm. and you're seeing different ways on how people are kind of attacking him saying that like oh you're a monster you're a monster but technically you know he might think he is a savior a hero like you yeah. were saying so I do ah, want to see how that unfolds. That's a good point. Like, how are they going to twist the story if you're choosing to feed on everyone? How does it end up? Because the idea is that there is this plague, everyone's sick, and it's also causing, I believe, vampirism. Yeah, and I so, like that with the powers, though, too, yeah. as well. How you can kind of see their vitals and see, like, who is maybe... Maybe he kind of gives off a, 
who to pick, who to feed on, and who mm. not to. You know what I mean? If they That's got like true. a disease, or if they had the plague, or something. You know, like yeah. or whatever they have. Yeah, and I, I also wonder because we see how he's feeding on everybody. I, I wonder if during a good playthrough. Do you still have to feed? Like, can you get through a whole playthrough without feeding on anybody? Or yeah. if, you, if you choose not to, do you just, like, end the game in a different way? Like, yeah. Like, end shorter or what? So, what we're seeing here is you and I have fired away with, like, 40,000 questions on which way this game can go, how things can end up, and that's the danger almost this game is playing with, right? Because there is so many answers to provide when you first look at it. In the game, there has to be answers and not a lot of role-playing games provide those answers. They'll usually find a way to put all these threads in the story and then put them into a funnel and have like two endings. Okay, and, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, and, and that can get a little frustrating personally. I want that game one of these days that has like five, 10 endings that as I play the game over and over, there's something kind of new to see each time. We see games with big open worlds that are dense, and in these dense open worlds, there's plenty of content in there that you might miss. Like, I was playing Fallout 4 recently, and I found an unmarked area, and it was a little cool moment, but it's not like that role-playing type of experience where I make a choice, like in a Mass Effect, you, you take out your pistol, you shoot someone, you're like, holy shit, I didn't know I could do that, and you see the chain reaction when following, someone yeah, 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 down the line reminds you of that. So that's the thing this game's messing around with. It's got a lot of answers to provide the players. True. And I can, I can see that even from just starting to follow the game and mm. see what it's all about, I can see what you're talking about through this trailer. I'm mm. trying to think about, okay, what am I going to get from this experience yes. just by looking at this trailer? And that's what we're here for. We're here to make it, you know what I mean, to figure it out and to give your take, like our take on it. So... so one thing I want to talk about lastly is we see the graphics of the game and you were a little surprised when I said, hey, this game's coming out next month. Do you think this gameplay kind of looks like a game coming out in a month? Do you think it looks a little choppy? I think it, if I'm honest, it looks a little muddy. It looks a little... Uh, I can kind of eh. agree on that. The color palette is a little bit... Lacking. Yeah, lacking yeah. in vibrant colors. Yeah. And But I understand, but that's what the theme of the game, that's yeah, what I'm Victorian. getting from that. I'm, yeah, Victorian England. I'm looking for like a movie kind of graphics when it comes to the game. Um, I can see where you're coming from with the palette, especially. Um, I think they need might need to you know brighten it up a little bit, mm -hmm. but... But it could be a Fallout 3, right? It sells the the story a little bit more when you see the, the browns and the greens. At first, you're like, ugh, what the fuck is this? But, <laughs> but then you play the game, and you go, okay, this, this works, though. This fits the world. So, hey, man, in less than a month, we're going to find out exactly whether or not this game is what we're hoping it is. I mean, it's getting very little press at the moment because... It's going up against E3. We were talking about that. June 5th. True. It's right before E3. It's got a small window to make an impact. And then after that, there's at least going to be like that one or two announcements at E3 that will blow people away. And that's what everyone's going to be talking about. Yeah, that's what the hype is going to be about. And you got to see if this game can stack up to even the hype about a new game. Yeah, you know? exactly. So hopefully they can get it done. Because it, it looks promising. It looks like a game that I would definitely put time into and, you know, see what it's about. Absolutely. Well, we'll figure it out. Connor, thank you so much for joining me in this anytime, video. Anytime, anytime. Great time. Let us know what you think of Vampire in the comments down below. Fire away, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content we create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.